How's it going, guys? So this question that I wrote, very important for PATH for step one, as well as internal medicine for 2CK. If you've been following my content, you know I'm not about making questions that are overly creative or entertaining. It's about cutting to the fucking chase, just increasing your score. That's why we're here, right? So before we get started, I will be my typical asshole, tell you to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button, really appreciate it. And find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, link is down below. And find me on Telegram, recently created a Telegram group and channel, the links are down below. Now, how about we start the fucking question here, all right? Where we've got this 39-year-old woman, she has a two-month history of fatigue and neck swelling. She has no change in her weight, nor does she have cold intolerance. Her menstrual cycle the past year has fluctuated between 28, 33, 33 days in length. Her cholesterol and hepatic AST are elevated. Serum TSH, T3, T4 are all normal. Antibody screening shows positive titers for thyroperoxidase and thyroglobulin. Physical exam shows a diffusely enlarged thyroid gland without nodularity. Questions merely asking what's the diagnosis. So what we're not going to do is make this a 36-minute clip where we talk about every little fucking detail about every condition here, okay? Uh, but I'm just going to cut to the chase. The first thing we're going to do is eliminate anaplastic thyroid carcinoma as well as eliminate medullary or medullary thyroid carcinoma. The reason is because the question tells us explicitly that there's uh, no nodularity. It's not mandatory that we have nodularity of the thyroid gland for these cancers, but when the question mentions it as an important negative, they are implying that it's not thyroid cancer, let alone the fact that anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, very rare, typically elderly males who have dysphagia, you can get invasion of adjacent structures such as the esophagus. Uh, between all the NBME content for step one and step two, we're talking many thousands of questions. I think I've only seen it once as a correct answer, uh, anaplastic, so it's low yield. Medullary thyroid carcinoma, even though the wrong answer in this case, very, very high yield for US simile, okay? We could do a very extended discussion. You should know that it's part of MEN2A and MEN2B. It's due to uh, oftentimes a rect uh, proto-oncogene mutation, and it can be familial, unrelated to men 2A and men 2B, okay? So they can just say, for example, the patient has a brother and dad who both had thyroid cancer. The patient also has thyroid cancer. What's the most likely diagnosis? No other information provided. Answer, medullary thyroid carcinoma, all right? Increased serum calcitonin is classic, and we can have uh, apple green birefringence on biopsy with Congo red stain due to the amyloid, okay? It's a uh, beta pleated sheets, so why don't we just move forward? Choice B, Graves' disease, wrong fucking answer. Uh, there's no reason to suspect hyperthyroidism in this patient. Okay, none of the classic uh, findings with tachycardia, heat intolerance, etc. cetera. Um, the mechanism, of course, is going to be antibodies against the TSH receptor, activating antibodies. Uh, these antibodies are called TSI thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, type 2 hypersensitivity, very high yield, okay? We don't have uh, titers here for TSI. Um, choice D, hurdle cell or Herthley cell carcinoma, wrong fucking answer. When students don't know an answer, they tend to choose weird sounding shit, okay? So there's no reason you should choose an answer uh, like hurdle cell or Herthley cell um, when you don't know. Okay, it's a wrong answer, and I just insert it into this question to be an asshole. Now, between Hashimoto and subacute granulomatous thyroiditis, uh, we can eliminate subacute granulomatous, okay, aka just merely subacute thyroiditis, aka Dequerian thyroiditis. They will always give you a tender or a painful thyroid in the question. Classically, you'll have a viral URTI, upper respiratory tract infection, that precedes it, okay, so viral stuff, a uh, runny nose for four days, followed by tender, painful thyroid. But bear in mind for 2CK, for harder questions, they don't have to tell you that there's a viral infection. Most viral infections are asymptomatic, right? So the other high yield point for Dequerre vein, apart from that it's painful slash tender, is that your uptake, if you do a radioiodine uptake scan, it's always low, even if the patient is hyper, okay? So if the patient's hyperthyroid and we have increased uptake, diffusely increased uptake, that's Graves. If we have uh, a focal... Uh, nodular uptake, that would be toxic adenoma. If we had a multi 
uh, nodular uptake, that's toxic multinodular goiter. But if we have hyperthyroidism and decreased uptake into the thyroid gland, you want to think thyroiditis, okay? Drug-induced, postpartum, and de Quervain, uh, the latter being tender slash painful. How about we move on, all right? So Hashimoto is our correct answer here. Now, instantaneously, you say, wait, what the fuck? Like, the serum TSH, T3, T4 are all normal. I agree. It's weird, all right? Um, but this is what the NBME wants. Now, classically, yes, you would have an increased serum TSH due to lack of negative feedback because your T3 and T4 are decreased. And I mean, the implication is that not every patient who has uh, thyroid dysfunction will have abnormal thyroid function tests. Okay, so it's important you just bear in mind. And uh, the patient has specific positivity for antibody titers for thyroproxase and thyroglobulin. I mean, thyroproxase, also known as antimicrosomal, and thyroglobulin, uh, these are relatively specific markers, uh, specific antibodies for Hashimoto, okay, despite our normal thyroid function tests. Um, the diffusely enlarged thyroid, that's our uh, goiter. Uh, menstrual irregularity is very common in patients with thyroid dysfunction. And uh, it should, I should also note that it's because it's not a part of this question, but high yield is that you can have myopathy, okay, proximal muscle weakness, hypothyroid myopathy with increased creatine kinase slash CK, and you can get dysthymia slash depression, okay, very high yield findings, especially in two CK questions. Now here, high cholesterol, yep, that's a, that's high yield for hypothyroidism. You can get bradycardia, 55 to 60, sometimes you'll see that in a question, and you say, but wait, what the fuck is the hepatic AST elevated for. I've seen this in IM questions for 2CK where you see the hepatic AST elevated, okay? I know, weird, I agree. Uh, but if you Google it, uh, you'll see that you can get uh, transaminitis in thyroid dysfunction. So as I prefaced with, we were not going to make this a 36 minute clip, all right? You know the deal, I'm gonna continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.